Hey guys, today I'm going to be going over three different AFK money making methods that range from mid level to high level. I will have timestamps in the description down below so you can check the different methods out, but let's jump straight into the video. Starting off with the more mid level method, we have collecting vibrant energy. You only require a level 60 divination for this method. However, there are quite a few other requirements or recommendations that will make the method much better. Right now, Vibrant Energy is selling for 664 GP each, which makes it the highest price energy in the game right now. And the main reason for that is Vibrant Energy is used quite often for Sign of the Porters, which are always just in high demand. So if you are wanting to do this method optimally with all the best boosts and everything, you will want the Divine Conversion Relic, which does require level 85 Divination. It can be boosted and also level 98 Archaeology and 86 inventions so quite a few fairly higher level requirements there all of those can be boosted however you will want an enrichment aura and a must buff familiar the elder divination outfit also will help increase the gp per hour divination cape and the ethereal connection and wisp herder perk from the memorial of gothics is also really helpful that being said if you don't have all of these recommendations or even if you don't have any you can still do the method of course you won't be able to make the 14 mil gp per hour um, but you will be able to make quite a bit of money because the vibrant energies are selling for quite high the afk time is about one minute to two minutes 45 seconds depends on how many people are on with you um, because the duration of the wisps lasts longer if there are other people interacting with it as well Finally, the XP per hour you can expect is around 20,000. It's not really a great training method if you're just going for energy, but you will get a little bit of passive divination XP. So when gearing up for this method, you want to make sure you have all of those things I mentioned active. The most important recommendation is the Divine Conversion Relic, because rather than converting one memory into the Rift at a time, you'll be able to convert all of them at once, which is basically going to double the amount of energies you can gather per hour. Along with that, make sure you bring your Muspa pouch, have your Elder Divination outfit, and your Divination cape if you do have 99 Divination, and you're going to be teleporting to the Warforge, so you can either use the Teleport at the Archaeology Guild, or use a Ring of Dueling to teleport here. The Vibrant Energies are just over here. Now you will notice no one is here, so I do recommend going to World 79, that is the Community Divination World, where other people are training the skill because since an update a few years ago they made the skill more interactive so if there are other players training at that uh, location with you it'll actually help you gather more energy per hour and gain more xp it also makes it a little bit more afk so you definitely want to go to world 79 to do this method now when testing this method i did spend a bit of time just checking to see how much energy per hour you could obtain I did have a fair amount of uh, enriched wisps because I was putting some chronicles into the energy rift and sometimes you will have other people do that for you. Um, so the GP per hour I show you might be slightly higher than what you would actually get um, if it is a downtime and no one's actually spawning enriched wisps. And so after six minutes of gathering energy, you can see I gathered almost 2,500, which shows a grand exchange price of about 1.6 mil. After selling the energy on the Grand Exchange, I made about 1.5 mil or 1.6 mil. So that was only in six minutes. So over the course of a full hour, you should expect around 14 to 16 mil, depending on how many players are there, how many enriched wisps you're getting, and if you have all the recommendations. But overall, it's a pretty solid AFK moneymaker. The next moneymaker we have is manifesting ectoplasm using the ritual. So basically you're just going to be creating ectoplasm. It is extremely AFK, about two minutes of AFK time. And the requirements include 95 necromancy. 99 necromancy is highly recommended because you will get the necromancy cape. And that will just get you a free alteration glyph, which you can then use on a multiply two glyph. Or ideally, if you have 103 necromancy, you can use a multiply three glyph. And then also, if you are going to be doing this method, you should just buy an alteration necklace. It will increase the amount of ectoplasm you receive by 20%. So that is going to be a huge buff. And plus the necklace, it isn't really that expensive and it will help you for all uh, necromancy rituals that you do. 
For this method, you can expect to make around 10 mil GP per hour, and for the Necromancy XP, you can get about 140,000 base XP per hour, and that is just doing the rituals, so you're not doing any of the ritual disturbances or anything like that which will of course get you a lot more XP if you're doing it, but that also makes the method not as AFK and you won't be making as much money because you won't be able to do as many rituals per hour. So to start this method, you have to do something a bit boring, which is just gathering buckets of slime. So if you have an ectophile, just uh, teleport to the ectofunctus. You'll want to bring some magic note paper because you're just going to be noting buckets of slime in the basement here. It will take about eight minutes to get enough buckets of slime for a full hour of rituals. You will be going through about 580 buckets of slime per hour. So depending on how long you want to do it, that's how many buckets of slime you should note. Now, if you do have the Mauritania legs two, three or four, you can get some free daily teleports to the Ectofuncus slime pool, which then you can just collect some of those buckets and then go bank them rather than using magic note paper if you want to save a little bit of money. And then if you do have the hard or elite Mortania achievements completed, you can get 26 or 39 buckets of slime per day just by talking to Robin. So that is another way you could just get some buckets of slime every day uh, pretty fast. Now, once you have enough buckets for however long you are going to be doing this method, you can just put them in the ritual storage and you can start the ritual. You will want to make sure you bring your ritual setup, which includes all your ghostly essence, ectoplasm, candles, things like that, and make sure you have that alteration necklace. Now, you will want to be doing the manifest ectoplasm ritual. So once you set all of the foundational glyphs for that ritual, you can then set the alteration glyphs and you'll want to do the highest multiply you have active. Do remember you can boost your necromancy level with either a necromancy potion, overloads, things like that to have access to higher level glyphs. So ideally you will want to boost up to 103 so you will have access to the multiply three glyphs so you can make the most amount of money per hour here. Once you have it all set up, you can start the ritual and this is the AFK part. You can see the timer at the top. You really just have to wait until it's done and the ectoplasm will go straight into the storage and just start another ritual. So it is a really awesome AFK moneymaker once you have everything set up, but it does just require a little bit of time to set the method up. And finally, my favorite AFK moneymaker is probably Killing Abyssal Beasts. It does require level 105 Slayer and does have a few higher level requirements, but it is really AFK. You get great Necromancy XP and uh, some pretty good GP per hour. So recommended is 90 plus Necromancy. You will want overloads and either the Vampirism or Penance Aura. I prefer using Penance just because it makes it extremely AFK. I don't have to worry about Prayer at all. Scripture of Wen is really nice. It will boost the kills per hour and the GP per hour. You will want to bring a Spring Cleaner as well. The Abyssal Beasts drop a lot of Alkables that your Spring Cleaner can automatically Alk. Curses is also a really important requirement, at least having 92 and Curses for Soul Split. If you are using the Penance Aura, you will have enough prayer to sustain Soul Split and Sorrow or even Ruination if you do have that unlocked. So you don't need to worry about that at all, um, but it is extremely helpful and it will boost your kills per hour. And at least having Soul Split is important. Um, just so you can have the sustainability. As you can see with this method, you will be able to get around 850,000 combat XP per hour and 280,000 HP XP per hour. It does sort of depend on your setup, but I'm going to be showing you guys a more mid-level setup just with tier 90 death dealer. Um, if you do have the first necromancy gear and you're going for XP rather than GP per hour, then uh, there is a different setup that might be a bit better for that. With this setup I will be showing you, you'll be able to make around 7 mil GP per hour. And the AFK time, it says 3 minutes there, that's just to pick up loot. You don't really have to do anything at all. You can make sure your overloads are always active. You can use a potion reservoir if you want. But even if you don't have overloads or aren't using them, it doesn't really affect the method that much. And you can literally just sit here as long as your Penance Aura is active, gain a ton of XP, and just pick up drops. 
Even if you don't pick up drops, you're getting some automatically alked drops and you'll still make money anyway. Um, so it is a really nice and chill AFK method. For the gear setup, I am using full death dealer gear. If you do have the first necromancer gear, there are some other setups you could use, but just to simplify it, uh, death dealer gear is what I'm going to use. You will want at least a few pieces anyway, just because having death dealer proc is really nice. And as you can see with the perks, I am using looting on my death dealer body. It's a pretty solid perk to just get some passive invention components. Alternatively, you could use a perk with some more DPS, like Crackling and Relentless or something like that. And then the perks on the legs don't really matter either, but I am using Impatient, which is quite helpful. Enhanced Devoted doesn't help at all. I just didn't swap the perk. Um, but you can see I am using Biting 2 and Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer is a really helpful perk here because it will increase your DPS by 7%. So that is a perk you will probably want. And getting Biting 2 Demon Slayer, it's pretty cheap to get. It's only about 1 mil GP to get the components. You can see I am using the Penance Aura. I do have a Zuck Cape. However, it isn't required. You're actually not going to be using Death Skulls that often. It is at the front of the ability bar, but just based off of the rotations, you won't be getting the 60% Adrenaline that often, so it's not crucial that you have that. Blood Amulet of Fury is nice to have. It's just a solid amulet. It's pretty cheap, and it will give you some passive healing and some slight DPS from it. I use the Luck of the Dwarves, but a Reaver's Ring could help with the DPS. And then finally, the Book of Wen. That's a great uh, book to use. It will deal some AoE damage and the tier 95 Necro Weapons. If you have tier 90, that's perfectly fine as well. For the inventory, I'm just bringing my basic items like Enhanced Excalibur, my Ancient Elven Ritual Shard. I am bringing some overloads and emergency super restores, and then I just have a bunch of noted or stackable items that Abyssal Beasts do drop. I do have the Spring Cleaner and the Gem Bag, and uh, just some charms there to pick those up once the Abyssal Demons die. For the ability rotation, I do have Death Skulls at the top of the ability bar, but like I mentioned, it isn't used that often, so it isn't as important to have. Soul Strike and Soul Sap are going to be the next two abilities. Soul Strike is a really nice ability to use. It uses one residual soul, and it does have a bit of AoE to it if there is a creature uh, one tile away. Spectral Scythe is going to be the key ability here. You will need to have the full three tiers on it so you can deal that massive AoE damage. Blood Siphon is really nice, especially if you are a bit of a lower necromancy level because it will give you some nice healing there with that uh, and then touch of death and finger of death just to finish off the revolution bar and so i'll just fast forward a few kills so you guys can see how it works you can see that my health is almost always full the lowest it might get is six or seven thousand then you might use a blood siphon to heal back up to full but it is completely afk prayer is always full because you are taking enough damage to regen all of that prayer with the penance or active and you really just need to have your area loot open and just collect a loot every once in a while. Sometimes with this method, I do use the Death Note Relic as well. I'm not in this clip, but sometimes I do choose to do that, so I will get the Infernal Ashes noted. It can help if you are doing it for a longer duration of time, but if you're only planning on doing this method for an hour or so, then it might not really be worth it to change your relic setups, since changing relics is also quite expensive. And those are the three AFK money-making methods that I wanted to show you guys today. I really hope you guys found the methods helpful. And if you are interested in more RS3 content, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I have a lot of really interesting and fun content coming up. And I really can't wait to share it with you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.